out of Psalm 84. As I was sitting there thinking uh, about the prodigal son, I said, Lord, he heard something out of this Old Testament book. And I thought about this verse, Psalms 84. This whole psalm is about church. Verse 10 says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. Thousand days living away from God one day is better. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house. Here's the key to it. My God of my God. I I thought about this boy in Luke 15 probably heard David's psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I preached out of this here the other Sunday at our church. And the first verse in this psalm says how amiable. Amy above. <coughs> it's got the word able in it. <coughs> or thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. <coughs> oh my. <coughs> I don't know if I'll make it or not. <coughs> But the word there, amiable, <coughs> means this in the 1828 dictionary. <coughs> Free, not like my throat. Free from irritation. <coughs> If you're irritated when you get to the house of God or during any type part of the service, amen, it's not, it's not God's fault. Amen. amen. The problem lies in you. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. And we ask you tonight in Jesus' name, Lord, that... God, that you do that that you want to do. For every heart, every soul, God, give understanding to minds, Lord. I pray, God, that the conviction that's already been in this place, Lord, would draw us to that altar of repentance Dear God, tonight somebody would run up a flag of surrender, dear God, and say, Lord, I'm yours. You're all I need. In Jesus' name, I plead the blood on the remainder of the service, dear God, and on every mind, every heart. I pray the devil wouldn't have a place here tonight. God, take hold of your people, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. And amen, 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 amen. All of you have read the prodigal son. Is that right? Yeah. We got some new folks in here, I think, that I hadn't seen that Riding on a uh, on the van, and I, I can't preach with that candy in my mouth. Amen. I got all this plastic in my mouth. It's hard enough to get it out with that. Amen. 
Uh, <clears throat> Luke 15 now. And uh, you read this, and it said in uh, verse number 11, uh, a certain man had two sons. I believe we've got somebody here tonight that's got a couple of boys, don't we? Amen. A certain man had two sons. I got a son-in-law and my daughter's got five sons. Oh my, I'm telling you, they had three boys and they wanted a girl so bad, so they tried for another one and they had a pair of twin boys, amen. Uh, I'm telling you, God knows what to do with you, amen. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And notice this line here. He divided unto them his living. And uh, I don't know as I'd have done that that quick just because that boy said do it but he did and then not many days after the younger son gathered all together and watch this took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living and my thinking tonight is that this boy was already gone before he gathered everything up and wasted it on riotous living. I wish they had a timeline here that would tell us how long it took him to do that as young and as wise as most young people are, amen, it probably, he probably took a long time to waste it. Do you believe that? I don't think so. I think that he got down there, amen, and he didn't have any sense about, uh, uh, amen, conserving anything, and it didn't take long, and it was all gone. It don't take the devil and his crowd long to waste you. Amen. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. Ain't it something when you're not where you ought to be that God can make something happen there that's not happening anywhere else? Amen. I've seen it rain right across the road and not rain here where we needed it. Amen. And uh, he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the, his fields <coughs> to feed swine. I preached in the jails all around home for several years, and I'd talk to mamas and daddies, their boys would be in jail, and a lot of them would say this, well, he just hung, started hanging around with the wrong crowd. Hmm? Yeah. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants 
of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am, am, no, am, am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And this was put in the boy's heart in the middle of in the middle of all his trouble in that far land, there's <coughs> some remembrances that's worth hanging on to. And he arose, in verse 20, and came to his father. Now, now look at this next line here. But when he was yet a great way off, he ain't made it home yet. He ain't made it back home yet. His father saw him. And I know mom and daddy could see him uh, the whole duration of him being gone. They saw him in that place and wondered about him and worried about him, amen, and, and prayed for him. In that place, amen. But when he saw it, and somewhere in the middle of that prayer, and in the middle of this boy being gone, in the midst of the worrying, amen, that mom and daddy, I believe, saw that boy settling up and heading back towards the house, amen. They never gave up hope that he had turned and come back home. Amen. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. No mention of the past. Hallelujah. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry for this is my son. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is, and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. He was angry. Now I want you to notice right here what it says. And would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive, and was lost and is found. Uh, look at verse 18. I want to... Look at this. I will arise and go. 
to my father. And then in verse 20, he was yet a great way off. And, and then I want to pay attention to the one that didn't leave home. He would not come in. He wouldn't come in. The devil in situations want to keep a family apart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I want to preach tonight for a few minutes on the long ride back home. I bet he got down there quicker than he got back home. It wasn't a turnaround trip. I want to say first of all tonight that I think lives were given for a family. I know, I know that it said in verse number 12 that the Father divided unto them. Look at this. His living. I believe it's more than just material things here. I, I believe that this daddy literally and mamas and daddies, amen, they're out there working and going and going to church and trying to do right, amen. Hey, they give their lives for the family. And I know with my own children, amen, that you never, never give up on them. And I know in my own life when I've turned and went into the far country, amen, it took me, hey, dear God, it took 30 years amen. to get back home. I, I remember Brother Lupe on my 18th birthday, I, I, I'd gotten a job, graduated from high school, I was working construction, and when I turned 18, my uncle was driving a work truck and we was coming back home and we was in a county where they sold liquor and I had them stop at that liquor store on my 18th birthday and I walked up in that liquor store and that man said, let me see your license. And I handed him my driving license and the man running that liquor store said this, first day, huh? First day, huh? From 18, I got saved when I was 42 years old, Brother George. All those years, from that day, amen, and prior days under that, amen, uh, under the influence, and that thing got a hold of me, amen, and I had a mom and daddy, amen, and I had an old uncle that loved me and carried me to church, amen, and tried to raise me right. Amen. But that thing that was in this boy here, he said, give me my part. I want my part. And what that deals with is the pride of life. Amen. He said, he was saying that he's going to take his journey. He's leaving home and what it's all about is this is my life and I'll live it like I want to live it. Amen. But I'm telling you, when he got in that hog pen and hey, and what it's things started happening, I promise you, and everything was gone. No man cared for him. Nobody wanted to help him. Amen. When you get out there under a bridge or a cardboard box or whatever. I used 
used to preach at the homeless mission every month up in Memphis, Tennessee, and there was a professional football player in there in that mission. He didn't look no different from the rest of the homeless people that were in that mission, amen, after all the money and all of the high life and all of that, amen. And I want you to know tonight that, hey, it's a long ride back home. I believe this old boy had him a horse or something. I like Cowboy preaching. He gathered all. I know as a teenager, you can gather up a lot of junk. And ain't none of it worth a flip. Amen. Now look, this daddy had given his life, and that boy, and he had some time to think about what he was doing in verse number 13 it said not many days after and it don't tell us how many days but he had some time there to think about what he was doing and no doubt I think that daddy after his raising and remembering how his daddy raised him amen in that far country that daddy done his best to try to detour him amen and I, I could see mama weeping and crying and telling him son you don't need to go oh my It's a long ride back home. When some of you that's sitting in here tonight and you get off out there and you think you got the world by the tail, amen, and oh, you're riding high and having a time, you remember what this old Mississippi preacher telling you tonight? It's not a joy ride. It's not a good time. The stinking world wants to show you the bright side of it. I saw where the First Baptist Church used to be in uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. You could look at the building and tell it used to be a church. But the church sold out for money. The First Baptist Church used to be in that building. And it had neon lights all over it, amen, and it was lit up. And the name of the building then was Bright Lights and Big City. Preacher friend of mine said when it was a church, he went and asked them if he could preach on the street and stand on their steps there that led down to the street and preach and they said no we don't do that here amen bright lights and big city ain't what you think it is and then in his lowest point the lowest point look at it he the bible said gathered everything and he took his journey far country here's what this boy's thinking i ain't never coming back home i'm on my own now no more haircuts no more being drugged to the church I'm getting out from under their thumb. Won't have to listen to that preacher anymore. How many times I sat in that little old church when they'd preach to me and I'd take my pocket knife and carve something in the back of the pew. I'd done everything I could to keep my mind 
of what was being said to me. Lord, Brother Mike, I missed it. I missed it. When I went in the army, got drafted in the army and went to Vietnam, I was just an old country boy from the hills of Mississippi. Sure, we had liquor and alcohol, but I wasn't real bad on, on that stuff. And, and I had never saw any of this dope business, this marijuana and these drugs and, and stuff. But when I got to Uncle Sam's army, I wasn't there a week and somebody started giving me that stuff. And you know what I'd done? I joined myself. Amen. Wanting to fit in. I mean, in the army, everybody dressed alike. Amen. But it wasn't a joy ride. Here's what you say. I can handle it. And then after years, Brother Dallas, say amen. You can say amen to this, and some of you others can say amen in here. It'll begin to handle you. It'll have a hold on you, and you want to lose from it, and you cannot get loose from it, amen. And you'll go to programs and this and that, amen. And it has such a hold on you, and it's sucking, sucking the literal life out of you. Amen. You see this leg of mine? I've had three hip surgeries because of it. Because of that far country. Huh? You see, this boy, after he wasted everything, he could have climbed back on that old horse and rode back home. Couldn't he? Yet, but because of pride, I'm going to make it here. I'm, I'm not going back. I promised myself I'm not going back. So he said, I'll fit in with this crowd some way. Then the joker. Oh, yeah, I got a nice hog farm down there you can work on. And this was a Jew boy. You go so far away from God. What God despises is what you'll do. Amen. I'm saying tonight. And then at the lowest, lowest point, when he'd wasted all, ain't it something how that God decided to send the famine to that land where he was? Hmm? See, there was lives gave for the family. But then the Lord sent a famine. He began to be in want. He turned like an animal. Hmm? He would have fain filled his belly. He would have gotten the very hog troughs. But somewhere right in that, th- and, and look at this. The Bible said when he was in that hog pen, he came to himself. 
and as bad as it was, and then God made it worse. Amen. It don't get better. It don't get better. 